there's a distinct possibility that it was an attack by our enemies. Whether it was planned or not is open to question. That there has been a history in Afghanistan since 2007 of Taliban infiltrators um, attacking both Afghan National Security Force and ISAF personnel um, under the cover of, uh, of, the, of ANSF uniforms. Um, sometimes this is from within, um, where we have had, uh, where we've had people shoot um, members of um, the friendly forces, and on other occasions it's been from without. So, for instance, during 2010, there were several attacks on ISAF um, infrastructure and bases, where uh, Taliban insurgents from the outside were attacking, wearing either um, coalition or um, Afghan National Security Force uniform. I think it's a tactic which has been used by um, the insurgents since 2007. As to whether it's a tactic that you can then describe as a strategy is a different, is a different question. That the insurgents in Afghanistan use all sorts of different methods in order to gain support both from the population and from the people that fight for them. Some of them are simply financial in paying people to do things. Others involve coercion um, and threatening families, etc. And in other cases, it is through fellow travellers who are infiltrated into these organisations um, to, to mount attacks. But at the same time, um, we have to be careful that um, we don't associate every attack with such infiltration because it's a war that's going on. It's a nasty war. People are psychologically damaged. And if you just, for instance, look at the United States forces in Iraq, that they had five separate instances of their own personnel turning their weapons on their comrades, not even, uh, not even counting attacks by Iraqi personnel. Um, so there are, as um, General Hurley said in his press conference t uh, today, that there are complex factors at play. There's also the cultural dimension to this, that um, a study that was done by a behavioural scientist for the US Army looking at fratricide attacks um, in Regional Command East in Afghanistan, that he concluded approximately half of the attacks were down to cultural misunderstandings, that a great deal of mistrust and suspicion between the Afghan partners and their, their US mentors and trainers arising from each other not understanding um, their cultural view of the world. Well, the problem with this, whatever the causes of it are, is that it breeds mistrust. That a training or a mentoring mission like this one requires a great degree of trust and ability to work together, just as any military operation does. Um, and the moment that soldiers have doubts about those that they're working with, those that they're training, those that they're going into battle and combat with, that the moment that that very essential glue which depends, uh, which military units depend on, starts to, to, to fall apart. Now that said, um, soldiers worldwide are sort of renowned for being able to just get on with the job, but it's obviously going to sort of creep into the back of people's minds that is the bloke behind me, is the bloke beside me, going to be reliable at a time when I need him or am I going to have to be on the on my guard all the time? Um, obviously it's important to stop these to stop these incidents for the reasons of that trust and also as you say just to purely sort of limit the, the, the cost in, in, in casualties. And ISAF is putting in various various measures to try and, and stop this. But whether we can stop it completely um, is a, another question that the Americans in particular are doubling their counterintelligence personnel, that they're um, always improving their, their registration and their biometric databases. But then it's also very difficult in a place like Afghanistan to do background checks. It's a, it's a country which has been, um, which has suffered from 20, 30 years of war, that there's not the written records, there's not the databases in existence that we would rely upon in Australia for such background checks. And as I said before, there's also the human psychological factors that you're never going to be able to, um, to, to, um, to meet. That if somebody suffers a psychological breakdown and has a weapon in their hand, that no 
uh, amount of of, of effort is going to prevent the, the, the uh, casualties that may result in that instance. So it's a very complex situation that it can be remedied or at least mitigated by better cultural understanding, by better vetting of, of Afghan recruits, by again training and, and discipline. But as with anything involving human beings, there's always going to be that degree of action that, that one just can't control because people are people. Understand. And of course, even you can screen and screen and screen, but again, the human factors that you can't control. If you have an Afghan soldier whose family is threatened and who is coerced, that he may have been screened until the cows come home, but then there is that human factor where he is deciding how he is going to, going to act. And sometimes that his own personal uh, his, his own personal buttons that, that the insurgents may push to motivate his actions may override any other loyalties which have been put in place. Um, I think in some ways you always have to um, involve, you have to invoke the, 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 the factor of, well not quite randomness but sometimes coincidence um, has a role to play. Now indeed studies of such incidents have, have seen that Oh, since 2007, there's been over 60 uh, coalition deaths due to fratricide incidents at the hands of um, Afghan, Afghan personnel, that the bulk of them have occurred since 2009. So there's been an increase of them um, in recent times. This cannot be denied. Obviously, there are other factors at play in that there are um, more US troops, for instance, on the ground than there were. Um, and obviously, we can't um, rule out that there is Taliban efforts to infiltrate and attack the, Af the, the ISAF forces from within, um, just like many of their other tactics in Afghanistan, which have been brought on by the fact that they can't um, meet the coalition forces on even terms out um, in, in the open because coalition firepower is, is, is telling. Um, so there is a, a there is a, a possible trend in the in the rising of, of these attacks and if you look at it com compared with their, their spectaculars across this fighting season it is probably it, it could well be an effort to to undermine the trust and between the um, the Afghan national security forces and their coalition partners which is essential to developing them as a military force and leading to the path in 2014 where ISAF forces can hand over and completely to um, the ANSF.